Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. What was the worst thing your guest did when they took make yourself at home very literally? The $900 phone sex bill. It was the early 90s and the bill came on paper and was about 100 pages. Edit, since this got a bunch of attention, I'll elaborate a bit. I let a guy stay in my house for a month while he was in summer school and I was going to be gone half the summer. He would call while blackout drunk. Other than this, he was an excellent house guest. He even told me that they were going to be these phone bills coming and that he would pay for it but we had no idea that it was going to be almost $1,000. The reason the bill was 100 pages was because each of the 1 to 900 numbers operated as individual little telephone companies that generated a separate bill for their services, so that $900 bill was about 50 separate bills printed individually that were bundled together by my local provider. If I didn't pay that bill somehow they were never going to let me have a telephone again. I was able to call some of the customer service departments and get some of the bills cancelled or reduced. My house guest coughed up $500 and gave me a CD player and a PlayStation and a TV. My brother's best friend came to live with us for a few months because he wanted to move back to our state. My parents agreed because he was supposed to go to college and they believe college education is important. Well eight years later and he is still there, all my parents' children have moved out but for some reason my brother's best friend is still living there. My husband's old friend stayed with us for two weeks while we were living in Japan. He was very smug and irritating, an instant expert on Japan after a few days, when we had been living there for two years. Finally, finally he left on a Friday. My husband and I had separate plans on Saturday. I returned in the afternoon to an unlocked door and the sound of the TV. I thought hubby had returned early. Nope. It was old friend, thinking we had gone for the weekend, he had broken into our apartment for an extra two night stay. You weren't supposed to be here, he protested, and he refused to leave until my husband came back home and told old pal personally that he had overstayed his welcome. My ex-husband had a less than savory friend. He walked into my home once, helped himself to my fridge without asking and then when he got himself some silverware, had the audacity to insult it and say it looked like something a grandmother would have. Well yes, yes it does, since it's hers and she gave it to me. Another time he went to my mill's house when we told him we didn't want to hang out. We weren't even home yet. He came in, say down, ordered a pizza that he refused to share with my mill or BIL, and just sat there watching TV for two hours until we got back from whatever we were doing. He was a grade A asshole. Fucking hate you, Craig. EDA, I remembered a third thing about him. He had a thing for my mom. Big time. My mom was in the middle of a divorce at the time, and he kept saying things like, what if I married your mom? Would you like me as a stepdad? He'd even try to flirt with her, and she would not, of course, give him the time of day. She didn't like him either. He was so fucking creepy. My father-in-law was staying with us for a month, he lived in Oman. The spare room was an office with a sofa bed in so it could double up for guests. He bought a double bed and got rid of the sofa bed. I lost my office. Started a kitchen fire by cooking spaghetti in cake pans without water. Edit. When I heard the fire alarm ring I ran to the kitchen to find him looking over the stove trying to blow out the fire, with his mouth. Like fua fua. Basically stoking the flames. I slide the flaming cake pan into the sink and dosed it in water to put it out. Me, yelling at him asking WTF he was doing. His only defense, it woulda worked. No motherfucker, it clearly wasn't working. I realized this day he started abusing Oxys and was so high he had no idea what he was doing. Sad story really. Rearranged my kitchen. That bitch. Edit, it wasn't my mom. It was a guy I'd gone on two dates with that I left alone in my apartment for a few hours. My mistake I guess. 
my wife three days ago. Tasked with feeding her friend's cat while they're away for a week. They said help yourself to whatever you like. She came home with their waffle maker. Pretty sure it meant she could score a couple of their Tim Tams not make off with their appliances. Dinner guest asked to stay overnight because of the snow, which wasn't forecasted until much later that night. Spouse and I agreed as we didn't have work the next day. But guest did, and at 7.30 in the morning he was freaking out because we hadn't shoveled the driveway for him yet. How am I supposed to get to work on time? When I was renting an apartment and my roommate had a GF staying over every day for two months. She would take a two-hour bath and would always not flush as she was saving water. She also would cook and then not clean up after, her food were always terrible. Another roommate's GF visited for a few hours, nice girl gave us food and was a good guest. The leech complained how she better not stay any longer because we don't like freeloaders. Her hypocrisy was amazing. She also refused to wear hygiene products so roommate's bed was bloody and gross. He had to get a new mattress. When they finally broke up she asked us to let her live there because her parents had kicked her out for trying to sell their house. An in-law took about a 28-minute shower after I explained we were in the middle of a drought and that our well was dangerously low. I'm assuming it was going to be a 30-minute shower but we ran out of water. Literally tried to move in. Had an old friend that was in town and I offered to let her stay here for a week instead of getting a hotel. A week turned into two, which became a month. When I confronted her and asked when her new place would be ready, she said she thought she could just stay. Since she had all of her stuff and was here for over two weeks, even the cops wouldn't take her away. Had to formally evict her. I let a friend and her dog stay at my house over the weekend while I was away. She left my kitchen a disaster, the back door unlocked, and best of all fleas. I had asked her directly if her dog was on flea prevention and she assured me it was. After I was swarmed with fleas in my living room, I questioned her again and she admitted that the flea prevention she was giving the dog were yeast and garlic tablets. She made no offer to help me treat the house or reimburse me. She was not invited back. EDA, I didn't know garlic was toxic to dogs, so thank y'all. Now I know to be extra careful with food prep. I think I remember the friend quitting those pills after this incident, but I'm not sure. She and I are no longer friends, shocker, but I do hope the dog is okay. PSA hippie remedies found on the internet are not an acceptable substitute for veterinary care and advice. My mother's friend and her children went on a vacation with us. We were sitting in the common area of the place we were staying at and started chatting to some strangers there. The friend's kid got up, walked to the coffee table, and just opened the stranger's bag of chips and started eating. Kid never asked first. Now, kids are stupid, he was 14 but still a kid. The issue was that his mother did absolutely fucking nothing. She watched him get up. Watched him open it and watched him start eating. One of the strangers just paused for a second, uh. Sure. Feel free to eat some. As he is moving in said by the way I have a dog I hope that's fine as his dog runs into my house and jumps on my couch. Never once cleaned up the dog's poop from the backyard. Sits right next to me on the couch when my husband was at work and asks me to restart what I was watching from the beginning so he can join. Complains I was using the second master for my office when the last friend who stayed with us, and paid rent, had it as his room. His stay was cut short. A friend of my so's. Showed up after 11 p.m. on a weeknight with some other random friend. Came home after 11 p.m. every night of the stay knowing we had to work in the morning. They weren't quiet either. Home and ready to party and trying to get us to drink. Spilled things and didn't wipe up, left glassware everywhere, used the fancy dishes, and never picked up after themselves. Never asked me anything about myself, insulted my restaurant recommendations, cheered against my team for no reason when I had the game on, 
and made a comment about how there must be a lot of gay stuff going on in my brother's rehab stay. Never stopped talking and bloviating, and was just obnoxious to be around. My so was pissed when they left but now doesn't seem to understand why I don't want them back. My dad's best friend and his family stayed with us for two weeks during the summer. I was nine and my sister was a newborn, literally two weeks old when they arrived. Already off to a bad start. The wife kept putting my sister onto her stomach while she slept, when noon was looking. When my mum finally caught the wife doing it and told her to stop because the risk of caught death, she replied I did it with all my kids and they turned out fine. She continued doing it. The wife would only cook sausages and mashed potatoes for dinner, and get angry at my mum when she cooked something different. She also heavily restricted anyone in the kitchen, I had to ask permission to get a cup of water or eat a biscuit from the pantry. Dad's friend would tell us what activity we were allowed to do. E.g. You must play in the backyard right now, don't come inside unless you need the toilet. You must watch TV right now, I don't care if you're not interested in the movie, just shut up and watch. They were house-sitting for two or three weeks I can't remember now. But when we got home, they rearranged almost all the furniture. Most of it was just moving things back but they pushed an old teacher's desk we had down into the basement, one of those huge metal monstrosities that weighs a ton. Well there was literally no way to get it back up those stairs without some kind of machine I couldn't afford. So that thing stayed in the basement and was sold with the home. They also damaged a recliner so it didn't recline anymore and claimed they didn't. Didn't leave for six months ate all our cheese and wasted all our dishwasher tablets on rerunning the dishwasher bc it did a bad job but would run the same load like 10 times he was sleeping w my flatmate and she undermined all our attempts at getting him to leave once we realized he was a hobosexual edit hobosexual sleeps or dates ppl for housing and our dishes were clean he was lazy and couldn't do the one chore i gave him he re-ran out of laziness I make all of my sandwiches for the week on Sunday night and put them in the refrigerator. An acquaintance was over with a group of friends, and he went into the kitchen for a minute. He came back with one of my pre-made sandwiches. It's not necessarily about the food per se, he could have easily made his own sandwich if he wanted to, but what would possess someone to take a pre-made sandwich from their host's refrigerator without asking? This became my own personal Seinfeld episode. Edit, I make my sandwiches to save the time and hassle of having to get everything out every single night and do the same thing all over again. Do the sandwiches get soggy? Yes, by Friday a little bit. But I am working on a system to prevent that. The post about separating layers with baggies or saran wrap is helpful. For what it's worth, I measure out my coffee pot grounds into little baggies for each day, and if I could, I'd have five jugs of water ready too. Am I allowed to talk about my current guests? My flatmate's friend has been here for nearly six days, they've used my food, expensive shower products, let their child run screaming up and down the hallway for hours without stopping, and, me being petty, looked at me like I am a weirdo for being out in my own kitchen. They were supposed to leave yesterday. I'm very annoyed. Edit good news lads my other flatmate said they're gone. I can breathe easy again, the sun is shining and there will hopefully never be another screaming child in that house. I know staying one extra day seems not too big of a deal but there was literally nowhere in the house I could go to escape the screaming. I am very happy. My grandma offered to make him a sandwich. A little while later he said, where is that sandwich coming from, South Dakota? Guess he thought it was taking too long. 35 years later I still think about that asshole sometimes and wonder WTF was he thinking? Just how could you say that to someone's grandmother you just met? He was my cousin's dorky boyfriend's friend. I was about 13 yo and appalled. My grandmother was the sweetest woman and an amazing hostess. I came home from work that day and my homie was there with his girl and four kids for weeks in my 1000 SW foot house. 
ate all my food and wouldn't leave me alone until I drove them 10 hours away to some family's house. Asterisk edit typo. Boy oh boy, do I have a story for you. So a couple years ago, just before the pandemic, our good friend and her boyfriend came to stay with my fiancé and I for a week. Our friend was a saint, her boyfriend was a literal goblin. To this day I have no idea how this man survived into his twenties, he was the absolute strangest person I've ever met. Very friendly, but very strange. We'll call him Sven. He was fine for the first couple of days. Took us all out for drinks, acted like a total gentleman. A couple of days in, he decides he wants to be a weed dealer in our neighborhood. For reference, we lived in a residential family neighborhood in the hood of our city. There were already several dealers on our block. We tried to convince him this was a very bad idea, specifically because we didn't want the other dealers on our block thinking our house was the competition. Sven did not listen. Fortunately nothing serious happened and he didn't run into anyone important. He did, however run into our next door neighbor, and invited himself into the guy's house. Now, at this point Sven texted his girlfriend saying he was at the neighbor's house just hanging out, our neighbor was a nice dude, but not someone we've ever actually hung out with, so we begin the process of trying to extract him. He's not picking up on it because he has no understanding of social cues whatsoever. Suddenly Sven stands up and exclaims ah shit I'm bleeding. His shin was bleeding a lot, he had apparently picked a scab. Our neighbor asked him if he wanted a band-aid, and Sven just said nah man I can handle it. We eventually got him out, but not before he bled all over the place. The next morning my fiancé gets up before the sunrise to use the bathroom and sees Sven in the backyard jerking off with his pants down. She decided not to confront him because it was weird. We later asked his girlfriend about it and offered to leave if they wanted to have sex, and apparently he believed it was rude to have sex in someone else's house and thought it would be polite to jerk off in the yard. Again, residential family neighborhood. No idea what possessed him to think this was okay. Sven had a condition where every time he was cold he would grab at his stomach and make audible uh brrrr sounds, and complain that his stomach hurt. We couldn't figure out what that had to do with being cold. At one point Sven bought a gallon of milk and a can of chili, rapidly ate the chili and chugged the milk, and then projectile vomited all over the backyard. When we asked his girlfriend why he didn't just use the toilet, she said he'd told her he wanted to be polite. I asked him about the vomit later on and he just said uh, ate too fast and left it at that. There were some other things that weren't exceptionally noteworthy but were still annoying. He'd sleep in our living room all day and fart a lot. He'd take hour long showers and use up all of our hot water, shampoo, and conditioner. On the day they're supposed to leave I just we get to the checkout line. On the day they're supposed to leave I decide I've had enough and I'm burned out, so I get in my car and start driving to the local CVS on my street to pick up a few things and get out of the house. Lo and behold, Sven hops our fence, slides in my passenger door, and says he needs a couple things for the trip so he'd be coming with me. When we get there he's just being loud and yelling across the store trying to have conversations with me, and at this point I'm just counting down the minutes until he leaves. We get to the checkout line, he cuts in front of me, and before the cashier even starts ringing him up he starts asking for discounts. I believe he asked for the out-of-towners discount and also tried to apply for a credit card. At a CVS. When this doesn't work and his stuff comes out to more than he wanted it to, he said ah shit, hey man can you get me this drink, I thought I'd be able to get some discounts. I reluctantly add his drink to my basket because I don't want to deal with the hassle. He looks in my basket, which contains shampoo and conditioner to replace the ones he used up, and says damn dude, you go through a lot of swab for a bald guy. No words. I've had relatives eat all the food in our fridge, use our house to play host to people they know in our city. They also broke our screen door and had no remorse whatsoever. It was presented as oh your screen door is broken. 
My nephew who we were helping out sold the car we let him use, got on a plane and left town. We didn't even know he left until we received a Facebook message from some random guy saying my nephew told him to contact us for the pink slip. He left his bedroom filled with cigarette butts, empty beer cans, and old vapes. I guess the worst part was taking off without saying goodbye my children were pretty hurt. I took in a niece because she was kicked out by her landlord and her roommates had nothing good to say about her. I only gave her a month and she left the guest bedroom a total mess, like someone was murdered there. I had to have professional cleaners come in, the carpet was gone as she threw all her trash on the floor. She left her tampons and dirty clothes everywhere. She even had bowls of food that had grown their own ecosystem. I took pictures of it all and when relatives chewed me out for kicking her out I jason sent them the photos. Another was a relative that stayed for two days, ate all my food while I was away for a few hours. That ate whole chicken and 12 slices of cheesecake. Dude broke my toilet. He has diabetes now and has liver and kidney problems. We have a 9 year old little girl from down the street who's friends with my daughter. She comes to our house at least every other day, and mostly just shows up. She has an opinion about everything we do. My wife or I can not make a move without feeling judged, or receiving some advice I would never expect from a 9 year old, ranging from how messy our house is, to how we spend our money. And she talks back as much as my own kids. It mostly makes us laugh. Mostly. I let a friend stay with me while he was in town. At the time I lived with four other people. He woke up in the morning and just started rummaging through the cupboards and was eating my roommate's food. When I asked him why he would do that, and that it wasn't even mine to offer to him, he said he would want guests at his house to feel comfortable just eating the food in the cupboards. My fiancé invited her friend over for weekend once and she ended up bringing her boyfriend with her. They stayed for two weeks. During the first few days they'd go to the bathroom and shower except their showers lasted about an hour. They were quite obviously having sex but left the shower running the whole time trying and failing cover the sound of her moaning and their bodies slapping together. The second time they did this we told them we know they're having sex and they can continue to do so only if they're willing to pay the extra amount they're putting on the water bill with their showers. However this caused them to just start randomly fucking whenever we left the room. I remember we were making them dinner in the kitchen and there was a little window where you could see into the living room and I heard noise and looked in to see the duvet moving up and down in a way that was obvious what they were doing. My fiancé and I just stood in the kitchen waiting for them to finish and then they complained the food was cold. Towards the end of the second week I went to pick up my fiancé from work and we came back to see them both butt naked fucking on our sofa. They saw us come in and didn't stop, just carried on. It was at that point we asked them to leave. The boyfriend pulled out and came on the carpet and then they got dressed and left. Needless to say my fiancé was not friends with them after that. My parents asked a neighbor to house sit for them while they were away for the week. She lived across the street from them and they had house sat slash dog sit for her a few times over the course of the year for free, remember this for later, because they're friends with her and didn't expect to be paid. She agreed to do this for them in exchange for them doing it for her. They told her she was welcome to hang out there if she wanted to, and they left some snack food for her and left a few drinks in the fridge, that sort of thing, and all she had to do was take in their mail, feed their two cats twice a day and they asked if she could clean the kitty litter twice while they were gone. So they told her, make yourself at home and feel free to hang out there if you would like. They get back, and she had literally been living there all week. Their bed was left unmade with dirty sheets, there were dirty towels in the bathroom, dirty dishes in the sink and in the dishwasher that she didn't clean, she ate all the snacks which was fine, but she was also clearly using a bunch of other stuff in their pantry to make meals with. Instead of cleaning out the kitty litter, which she knew how to do, she just dumped a giant bag of kitty litter over top of the old, shit filled litter to the point that it had overflowed and she just didn't clean it up. My parents didn't say anything, they said thank you to her and said they'd see her later. 
She came over a couple days later and asked where her $100 was that they owe her for house sitting. My parents were like WTF? And reminded her of the discussion they had. She demanded they give her that money because that's what was owed to her for all that she did. My mom gave her $50 and told her she wasn't giving her another cent, and that she won't be house sitting or dog sitting for her anymore. They still talk here and there, but that kinda put a damper on their friendship. My parents' house, but I let my buddy in high school stay a night because he was kicked out of his house and didn't want to stay in the park. I guess he was afraid to go upstairs when my parents woke up so he pissed in the trash barrel. So fucking gross having to dump that out. A friend of mine stayed over for the weekend. He told me to leave my own room so he could fuck his girlfriend on my bed. I told him no so he waited till I left and did it anyway. Left me a nice big wet spot on my sheets. Threw him out and never let him come over again. Had a guy stay with me for about a month from Florida because he met a girl online which turned into a big catfishing debacle. We had mutual friends and he was waiting for his parents to wire him money for a plane ticket back home, and I didn't want the dummy to be out on the streets. The entire time he stayed with me, 90% of his daily caloric intake was eating slices of American cheese out of the fridge. Hey, I just cooked a big meal. You hungry? No thanks, I'm okay. Goes to the fridge for cheese. Probably went through two dozen packs of cheese in that one month. Like, not a huge deal, but I'm tired of constantly buying cheese you weird fuck. The only positive was that when he went home, he left a dollar two hundred plus pair of nice Oakleys at my house. Wore them for a few years. Payment for all the cheese. My parents helped remodel my house and convinced my husband to gut everything and start over. In thousands of credit card debt because of it now. They also went completely against our wishes several times and made changes to plans without consulting us. They would threaten to stop helping us if we mentioned moving into our own home. It took us a year and two weeks from the day we purchased till the day we finally got moved it. Another one. Didn't happen to me but to my parents. My dad had a cousin who was schizophrenic and was obviously a little weird because of that and he used to come over every Friday, Saturday and sometimes Sundays for dinner with us. One time my dad made some of that good KC style barbecue with ribs and baked beans. Cousin's digestive system couldn't handle it and he went to the bathroom and released explosive shits absolutely everywhere and didn't tell anyone, just went straight back to watching the Chiefs game in my dad's man cave shed with my parents. My sister walked in after him and told me. I looked and was shocked and then we went to the man cave to tell my mom because my sister was about to piss herself and we weren't trying to clean it, I was only probably 12 or 13 and she was probably 9 or 10, imagine our hysterical laughing because he was grunting and shitting up a storm and we could hear him. Mom didn't believe us, we finally convinced her to come into the house to see it and she screamed bloody murder. She got my dad and he cleaned it all up and asked his cousin why he didn't tell anyone. Cousin's response beans make me fart, sauce makes me shart. Imagine being like 13 and 10 years old and having to keep a straight face when that came out of his mouth because we didn't want to make him feel bad. As soon as he left we were rolling though. My grandpa had driven over to our house for a few months to get away from his insane wife. In turn, he was fixing up our disgusting bathroom. He was perfectly fine. But when it came time to fix some of the plumbing, he decided to play it safe and find someone to do it instead. Luckily, my mom found some guy on next door willing to do it for free. The first red flag should have been when he showed up around 6 hours after he agreed to. It was around 8 at this point but my grandpa was just grateful to get someone to help him who wasn't his ex-wife my grandma, yelling at him for every perceived mistake. But this man, acting wide awake and just a wee bit manic, stayed till 4 a.m. 4 a.m. This guy worked with my absolutely exhausted grandpa until the sun was coming up, only taking a tiny break to wolf down a sandwich my grandma had made, complaining the entire time. We highly believe he was on some sort of drugs. 
the cherry on top. When he finally left, my mom took the time to inform me that hey, I think that was your great uncle. You see, I've never met my biological father, but this man was apparently the spitting image of him. They also were both Italian plumbers, and if I believe correctly, completely insane. AHH, the people I'm related to. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.